Stitchers, Stitches, Stitchers, no, it's Lou Who Stitches, and I'm here for another floss tube video. First of all, I just want to thank everybody who comments and leaves their thumbs up and um, generally comes and views these videos because it, it's encouraging. It lets me know if um, I should keep doing this or not, and so there were enough of you that I'm going to keep on going. Woohoo! Anyway, um, I'm going to look at my notes real quick, see where I'm at. So today, I am sitting in my corner. Um, it doesn't look much like a corner. I'm going to kind of turn it so you can sort of see. Here's my drink I'm drinking while we're doing this. <laughs> anyway, this is sort of my corner um, where I keep, I have my sewing machine and... I have a lot of my stitchy stuff, actually most of my stitchy stuff. I have a closet in the hallway that holds a lot of fabric and um, that sort of thing because when you have a mom and a sister who are quilters and you go to fabric stores, it's hard not to buy fabric. Anyway, my husband always says, you didn't buy anything, did you? Well, I just bought a little something. Anyway, so I get more excited about going into uh, needlework shops, but I do enjoy a good quilt shop. So anyway, um, so I'm sitting in my little stitchy. This isn't where I sit to stitch. This is just kind of the place where everything is. And then I do sewing here. That's what I do. Anyway, um, so I'm going to try and be more organized today, a little less rambly, stay a little bit on focused and on task, um, not put my feet on the stool so that I don't wiggle the camera. <laughs> anyway, um, so the first thing I want to take care of right away is last time I um, was doing a gift away. Um, so I had two copies of this from the uh, big DMC box that I got from my friend. And um, there were two copies of this particular magazine in there. And there were four of you who said you would like to have it. And the question was, um, what's the question? Do you prefer sampler, traditional type stitching, or do you like more modern stitching? And Linda, I forgot to write down, but Linda Savage wins Cross Country Stitching Magazine. So Linda Savage. Um, I understand that YouTube no longer has messages. So I will put my email in the links below. So email me your address and I will get this off in the mail to you. Yay! <laughs> so anyway, um, so Linda Savage wins the magazine. Um, I don't know what kind of words to use, but the important thing is that I guess it doesn't get mentioned in the comments below. Um, so we don't have trolls coming and, you know, getting stuff to just sell. We want people who really want them to use them for stitching to have them. That's what I want. Anyway, um, okay, so the last couple weeks, I think I mentioned in my last video, I was going down to my dad's house to help him clean things out. And we spent, I was down there almost 10 days. Um, I, I think it was one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, it was 10 days. <laughs> I was down there 10 days. Um, and we cleaned out his garage and uh, my brother rented a six cubic yard dumpster and we filled it to the top. Um, I haven't gotten word whether it was over a ton of stuff or not, but <laughs> it was a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of memories. What I discovered about my mom is that she never threw a card or a letter away. And um, so my task a lot of the time was to go through boxes of cards and letters because there would be um, photos stuffed in, um, sometimes really nice photos of family members. So I, that was my job. And so one day, I think I spent all afternoon going through a trunk 
of stuff that it had just been thrown in the trunk and no rhyme or reason. So, um, which brings me to a book that I've been reading. Actually, I finished reading. Um, so I won't go into, <laughs> there were tears, there was laughter. It was emotional. <laughs> anyway, but I've been reading a book and it's called The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. And it's by Margareta Magnuson. I would show it to you, but I've been reading it on my Kindle. Um, and, but, and I finished reading it and she just, she's, she references herself as being between 80 and 100 and she talks about the importance of not leaving things for your kids and other family members or whoever um, comes after you to clean things out. Um, and I can tell you from now my most recent experience that at least when it comes to papers and letters and cards and things, that's important because what happens is when you have such a huge quantity of things, it's hard to determine what was really important and really valued against things that were just, you know, nice to get, you know. So um, when I've recovered <laughs> from helping my dad, uh, I think one of my first tasks is, because I, I don't save quite the way my mom did, but um, I know I've saved a lot of cards and letters that my kids are like, you know, because there was stuff like, I don't even know who these people are. Or I was familiar with their names, but I didn't really know what the connection was. And um, so, anyway, don't be afraid to throw things away. I think that's what I'm trying to tell people, which leads me to my next thing. My tension in my life right now is, so as a crafter, um, and, and let me know if I'm wrong about this, but as a crafter, we tend to collect things because like for me, there are things I just like. Um, I really like milk glass. I... Uh, my husband, um, when he's out in the woods, he sometimes is on sites that were old logging sites and he'll bring home bottles, um, that old, old bottles, antique bottles that were just out in the woods that weren't broken. And so I have a whole collection of old bottles, um, you know, and they come in pretty colors like green and purple and, and clear. Um, you know, I like blue and white plates. I like fabric. I like thread. I like all kinds of things. And so it's really, so the tension in my life right now is how to um, not over collect. Um, so, <laughs> and you'll go in a few minutes when I show you everything that I got at Kelsey's, you're going to say, um, I don't know if the message is hitting home yet, Cindy. <laughs> anyway, um, but that's the tension in my life right now. Collecting versus purging. So um, fortunately, there are some areas like, um, you know, my, my daughter, my homeschooling daughter is entering her senior year. So I can get rid of curriculum forever. So if you're a homeschooler that's watching this, and you have kids between the ages of kindergarten and junior high, uh, let me know. I have some stuff you might be interested in, <laughs> or you may not, but let me know. We can make a deal. Um, anyway, so my life has been a lot about purging the last two weeks. Um, but moving on to the happy additions, the collecting part. So I did go to, I um, took a morning and I told my brother, I said, I need to go do something fun. And I had my daughter Gladys with me and she was helping us. A lot of what she did was break down cardboard boxes, um, poor thing, and watch the dog to keep the dog from wandering away. Um, anyway, my dad's dog. Uh, so... Um, I told my brother, I, I need a break and I'm going, I'm going downtown. <laughs> so I went downtown Placerville and of course I went to Kelsey's and then took my daughter to TJ Maxx cause that's where she wanted to go. She wanted some new duds and I said, 
you're getting new duds because you're working hard, girly. So um, anyway, went to Kelsey's and I kind of, so I was going through the patterns that she had and I was plucking out the ones that I thought I would like, thinking, okay, now when I've plucked out the ones I, I want, I'm going to go through them and then pare it down to just a few. That didn't happen. <laughs> I don't know. I got there and I was like, I can't give any of them up. I've been wanting all of these for a long time. And um, my wish list on one, two, three stitch is like getting really long. Um, so I need to actually go, well, I need to go through my wish list and make sure that I didn't like put any of these on my wish list so I don't buy them again. So the first thing I got was, and I'll try and, was Country Cottage Needleworks. Welcome to the forest, and I just love the little mushrooms and the bunny and the owl and the raccoon there. So it looks like it's just, it's small and it's cute, and I'll have to make it. <laughs> it might be a good quick stitch sometime. And then there were a couple of Plum Street samplers. I saw several people doing Hello Summer. From Plum Street Sampler on Floss Tube. I've seen them and I thought I want to do that. I love the eagle and um, I think Amy Loves Toads did this one but she like kind of shortened it right in here and then took the watermelon and put it over here. I think that was Amy Loves Toads. I've also been watching a lot of Floss Tube so sometimes I forget where I see stuff. <laughs> Anyway, so I got that, and then I thought Wilhelmina needed a friend, so I got Bovinia from Plum Street Samplers. But uh, Wilhelmina hasn't gotten any attention, so she's not going to be in my whip parade today, but um, she's still there. So, but Bovinia, someday we'll join her. And then this next one is kind of near and dear to my heart. Because when we first moved up here, so this is black, Red Wing Blackbirds from Carriage House Samplings. And they do the Hawkrun Hollow series, which I kind of, I put on one, two, three stitch, I put the, the farms of Hawkrun Hollow. I put that on my wish list. I didn't think I would want to do a Hawkrun Hollow, but the more I looked at it, and then I've been watching Amy Loves Toads and she's been doing a year in hot run hollow and i just thought these are really adorable <sighs> some days it just takes me a while anyway so when we first moved to where we live um i had never seen red winged blackbirds before and i just was i just thought they were beautiful and interesting and we see them out on the byways and highways out in the fields a lot more so like here in town where I live I don't see them very often but when we go for a drive or something we'll see them and they're just so pretty because it's all of a sudden it's this flash of color that comes out of the grass and stuff and it just I thought this this piece really captures the feeling of seeing um, some red-winged blackbirds and then um, oh I got a prairie schooler um, which I think is a reprint because it's not on the heavy cardstock. It's on a heavy paper, but it's not on the heavy cardstock. But it's a, a prairie year. And I ha I kind of feel like these might have been a series in cross stitch and country crafts or cross stitch and needlework way back in the early 90s. Or something, maybe something like it. Maybe it wasn't these in particular, but I like, I really like the turkey. He's cute, and I like, I like that. Those two really drew me in, the turkey and, and then the watermelon. Love it. Love it. Can't wait to, and you know what's nice about these? Quick, small, you can do a bunch of smalls, quick and easy, and then, um, Excuse me, plastic. Um, then I found this Bent Creek Patriotic, the alphabet. Um, it just says flag, 1998. 
So I think I might make that 2018 down there because, or <laughs> whenever I stitch it, maybe 2019. Um, but from Bent Creek, got that one. Um, so that was my haul from Kelsey's Needle Crafts. And then I got home and I wasn't going to buy anything else. It was like, okay, girl, you spent a nice chunk of change at Kelsey's. You can't buy anything else. And then somebody on Stitch Mania on Facebook posted this. I'm sorry. It's... Just getting coordinated with the camera. I was smitten. Are you kidding me? Chickens and sewing. Come on. You gotta. Anyway, I was smitten and there's like no back stitching that I can see. Anyway, so I think the exchange rate between euros and dollars is like a dollar fifteen to the euro. So this was six euros so I think it was seven it's like seven fifteen dollars seven dollars and fifteen cents for this and because this was my and this is from Jar, uh, Jardin Privé and the designer is um, Camille Colje Camps my French is not good I'm probably massacring that I, I'm pretty sure I got Camille right, but the first part of her last name, I'm not sure I got right. <laughs> anyway, so really cute. And then she sent me, because it was my first order, I got a gift chart. And it's just the chart in black and white. And it's this one. I have had my eye on this for a long time. I've just, I've seen it on Instagram and people doing it on Instagram and stuff. And I've kind of thought, oh, that would be cute. And I wasn't, I don't know, I didn't really realize it was Jardin Privé. Jardin Privé. Um, <laughs> uh, I didn't realize that it was a pattern from that site. So um, anyway, she sent me this. Now, what I thought was interesting, these are PDFs. And when I sell my patterns on Etsy, they're PDFs. So you can instantly download them, print them out. I like to print out my stuff. Um, some people like to transfer it to an app or whatever on their computer, which is fine. Just download it. Um, but I'm not going to show you this. But what I thought was interesting, on the chart, it says, only for Cynthia Young. And um, with, and then there's, of course, a statement about please don't copy and this is only for you. And um, I like that. I thought that's a really nice way to protect your copyright without being too nasty. It's just like, this is only for you. You get to use it. Nobody else. And um, that's okay. I think that's, um, as a designer... It's nice to know that other people are doing things to help protect all designers. Intellectual property is really hard to protect. And we've seen lots of cases in which it's become an issue in media. So anyway, I'm not super knowledgeable about it. I'm not going to go on anymore about it. And then, um, but back to like the happy acquisitions. Um, this came in the mail the other day, just cross-stitch, and I just think the sampler on the front is so fun. I think I would like to tone the colors down a little bit, which is a little bit surprising coming from me, because I like bright colors. I mean, look behind me. And, but, I don't know, I feel like a sampler, even though, like, originally it would have probably been really bright, I feel like it needs to be a little toned down. I don't know. But I have to say, when I got my first issue this year of Just Cross Stitch, I really debated about keeping it, keeping my subscription, because I thought, this is boring. 
there is nothing in here I want to stitch nothing and then um, I I follow them on Facebook and they brought up a question like who would you like to see in our magazine or what and then what kind of cross stitch would you like to see so I listed a bunch of stuff and said you guys need to get with it <laughs> I mean I was nicer than that but um, you know you need you have a wealth of designers out there and you need to look at what your customer base is actually interested in which I'll get to that for myself in just a minute um, but I anyway then I mean I'm sure it wasn't just me because you know who wouldn't listen to me <laughs> anyway um, I noticed in the next couple um, issues that, that there were things I wanted to stitch and that I, I really liked. And then in this issue, there's like three or four things. And there's a couple of things I don't know that I'd stitch, but I think are really cute. I really, really liked. I'm sorry, this will just take a minute. There, there were some patriotic things. There are some patriotic things in there, in here. Um, one is this July quilt, which I think is really cute. And then, um, oh, this bolster. I just love it. I just love it. It says, Happy Fourth of July. And the designer on that is Natalia Luneva. I'm not familiar with her, but really like it so they maintained a subscriber <laughs> in me <laughs> like that's such a big deal <laughs> it's not anyway so um as I was mentioning before I'm gonna get into some shop news for my shop um, right now and um, this is me trying to be organized instead of rambly um, so Etsy has made some changes and I, oh, I meant to uh, check my email before I got on here. They've upped their commission from sales. And if you are mailing stuff, they are now going to take a percentage of your shipping costs. Um, my brother works in retail, um, at least until the end of the week, I think. Uh, and he's in the online side at Target and I asked him I said what do you think about that and he said well he he explained it to me I'm not going to try and explain it to you um, there are but what it boiled down to was there are people probably out there whether on eBay or Etsy or wherever that give a flat rate so sometimes they're actually going to be making money on shipping and I'm not saying this is everybody and sometimes they'll be losing money on shipping um, but they'll just do like a flat rate it's five dollars to send this no matter who what it is it's five dollar flat rate um, so essentially what Etsy is trying to do is get at some of that extra money close a loophole to making more for a person to make more money on a an item um, I don't think personally that there's a lot of crafters and hand makers out there that are doing that. Um, people I meet, they love their craft, they're working hard, and they just want to sell their stuff and it costs them, I mean, shipping has gone up. Um, Kitten Stitcher was talking about shipping out of the United States, um, and how that's gone up in price and um, now for me it doesn't really affect me at this point in my business because all of my stuff is PDF and so there are no shipping costs now someday I would like to be able to print patterns but um, I don't know I'll have to see where things are at with Etsy to see if I would sell them on Etsy or not, or or what. I don't know. I know there are some makers who are just going to set up their own websites. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just, 
you know what? I'm the kind of person that let's wait it out and see what happens. So anyway, that's my two cents on Etsy. I, I don't think it's necessarily a brilliant move. Um, but there may be a lot of um, fear over it initially, and then everything will just settle back down. So who knows? We'll just see. Okay, but on to my shop news. Let me get a drink. I'm a little dry mouthed. Um, so I have um, two Lou Who Bird things. So we have Lou Who Bird. I have this board behind it so that he doesn't, so you can see him better. This little guy is on sale 10% off starting today in my shop through July 4th. He'll be 10% off. Um, there you go. So Luhu Bird. I call him Uncle Sam Luhu. Luhu Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam Luhu. 10% off in my shop. And then I have a new release. And this release is special to me for a few reasons. And um, one, um, it's the last model that my mom stitched for me. And I partially stitched it and then she finished it for me. Um, but it's special for that reason to me. Um, and it's special because this is the end of the Luhu series. I'm not going to be making any more Luhu birds, designing any more Luhu birds. Um, they're really cute and I love them, but um, I, I want to take some new directions with my shop. And I see myself moving in different directions, influenced by just the things that I'm stitching on, on a regular basis. I want to see if I can um, marry some of the traditional with the modern to make something different. Anyway, but so this is, he will be released in my shop on Friday, June 22nd. I'm taping this on Thursday, so I'm not sure if I'm going to put this up today or tomorrow, but um, he will be released June 22nd. And there he is. And um, the fabric, this fabric right here, so this is actually a quilt hoop. It's for quilting. It's kind of like uh, <laughs> an embroidery hoop on steroids. Um, anyway, and then I, I, I am not the best finisher. I get ideas and then I'm not sure how to execute them. <laughs> so this little guy, I put him on a piece of artboard, actually very much like this. So in the midst of going through things, I found a bunch of my stuff. I thought I didn't have anything at my dad's house. Um, but I found a bunch of my artboard. I'm like, why did I leave this behind? This stuff is gold. Anyway, so I cut out a piece of artboard and... Um, I just glued him on there. I mean, not, I didn't put glue on the face of it, but on the back part behind here. And then put some big chunky rickrack around the edge. And that didn't quite finish. And so I took my big quilt hoop and I took a, a fat half that I had. And this is from a designer. I believe this is from a designer called K Facet and or from his line anyway he is just like in the color bright bright color and I just thought it was perfect it does have a direction oops there we go isn't that pretty anyway so I just stretched it over that um, quilt hoop and then what I did is I took magnets. It's like a giant needle minder on there. So this is just attached to the quilt hoop with magnets. That's why it's kind of like whoa, floppy. Anyway, 
then it still didn't look quite finished. And I like to make things kind of temporary um, and easy for myself. So to attach the quilt hoop to this thing, which I got at Michael's, and it was on sale, um, I just took plastic tack, you know that gummy stuff and you knead it for a while and get it warm and it gets sticky and then you can put it on things. If you were in college and put posters in your apartment wall, you probably use Plasti Tac or a lot of toothpaste later. Um, anyway, so it's just, whoops, it actually is coming off. Yeah, that's all I did. I just Plasti Tacked it to this board. And then I thought, I'm going to leave it up overnight. <laughs> Make sure it doesn't fall off, but it didn't. Yay! So I'll hang him up somewhere in the house. He's got to go through, um, he's got a lot of photographing to happen yet today so that's happening in my shop and um, so that will be released um, today's Thursday that'll be released tomorrow it may be in my shop by the end of the day but definitely by tomorrow um, um, so other things going on I have been working on some other designs um, so I've um, you see my chalkboard behind me, and I have my verse on there. Um, so I do this here at home, and then I do the big, huge bulletin board at my daughter's school. And I told you about some Valentines I did. Anyway, I made a pattern of this particular one, and instead of saying Be Mine Valentine, it says be happy and bumble. So um, I <laughs> Tuesday was not a fantastic stitching day. I stitched and stitched and stitched on this piece and ended up having to frog a bunch. That was disappointing. <laughs> and then I sat down later in the day after you know after it gotten dark. And I thought, I'm going to work on Ida Mae Crow. Here's Ida Mae. And I stitched and stitched and stitched and realized I'd messed up. And so I frogged. That was Tuesday. A lot of frogging on Tuesday. Very frustrating. So yesterday when I sat down to stitch, I was like, I don't want to work on either one of those projects. But I really need to work on something for my shop. So I started the pattern for um, Be Happy and Bumble. And this is as far as I got. Oh, here, let me put the, there we go. That's the B. Um, this fabric is, oh, I have it right here. So some of you asked me on a previous vi video, this is 28 Count Dusk Lugana fabric that I got from 123 Stitch. And um, it's a 13 by 17 piece. Um, It's hard to stitch on. And I started by stitching the black here. I thought I was going to rip my eyeballs out. I just was, it was so hard because there was so little contrast. And so I had like my phone light on my lap shining up through. I had my, um, where is it? I thought I brought it out here. I guess I didn't. I have a magnifying thing that I put over with a light that I put over my neck and it kind of sits here and I had that. I had lights on in the house. I had a sunshiny window. I was like, <sighs> I don't know. Once I got through the initial black, I kind of figured out a way to set up light so that I could see better. Once I figured that out, it got better. But it's a tough fabric to stitch on. It's harder than the Black Ada, which I'm stitching this on. So, for those of you. So when I release these, I am going to um, just talk about an option, like what to do if you would like to do it on a lighter fabric. You know, what to do about thread color and that sort of thing. So those are my whips right now. That's, that's what I'm working on. Um, and it goes along with my shop. Anyway, um, 
So the last thing I want to talk about today is there is a effort on to create a floss tube recipe book um, with floss tubers, and it's called it's supposed to be called Cooking with Floss Tube. And I first got a message from Hanan. Um, about this and I didn't really know what it was about so I just kind of just kind of ignored it because <laughs> I didn't know what I didn't know what it was about and then um, I heard some other floss tubers talking about it and it got fleshed out a little bit more for me and so I I told Hanan I would promote this on my channel so what you do and you don't have to be someone who's got a floss tube channel you can just be someone who watches but what you need to do is pick out a recipe that you would like to enter um, include a bio it says a bio to include your Instagram profile a floss tube if you have one and fans are welcome okay so and then so you are going to give your recipe your bio um, Write a little something about what the recipe means to you, and that's a cat that will not quit until I open the door, so excuse me. Come on. Hopefully she'll leave me alone for another five minutes. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, um, uh, so your recipe, your bio, what the recipe means to you, um, and then a pic of you or your favorite cross stitch or just some sort of picture to adorn your recipe. And you send it to stitchandmisfits at gmail.com and I will provide a link down below here to Stitch and Misfits. I think that's okay if I do that. I think they want to get the word out. There is no, um, as far as I know, there's no deadline. I asked Hanan yesterday if there was a deadline. She said, no, there's no deadline yet. Um, and I was watching Donna Ray on Flannel Jammy's Farm, and she was saying that proceeds from the book will be going to a charity, as yet undecided yet, but um, breast cancer, Alzheimer's, and HIV AIDS research, I think were all mentioned. Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong, but I seem to remember that because they all resonated with me. I, we've had some member of our family or extended family affected by all of those diseases. So um, I thought, I'm in. I'm entering a recipe. Now I just have to decide what the recipe is. <laughs> I have no idea. I As I've hit my 50s, and on Saturday I'll be 53, I've <laughs> really lost my love of cooking, so but I do have recipes that I still enjoy making, so I'll, I'll find something. Um, that's it for today. Um, thanks for coming back. Thank you for sticking with me. I want to welcome, I should have done this at the beginning, welcome everybody who's new to my channel and ask you to give me a thumbs up or and subscribe because um, that um, helps me keep doing this and because it's encouraging <laughs> it doesn't give me anything else except encouragement when you do that um, and that's it for today so I hope you all are enjoying your summer and that um, you get lots of stitching in um, and I just oh no she's not gonna let me I thought maybe one of the cats would come and say goodbye with me <laughs> no she's not gonna do that um, so anyway, happy stitching everyone. Thank you for coming by.